Oh, I've got a fever. And the only prescription is more power. You join me inside the Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye. And yeah, I could tell you that this generation charger is 10 years old, that its platform is even older than that. And uh, it wouldn't matter, like even a little bit, because this is the most powerful and fastest mass production sedan you can buy with a top speed of 203 miles per hour. Now, technically, the Bentley Flying Spur W12 powered has a top speed of 207, but that's not mass production. Whereas this vehicle is something that theoretically, the average Joe who's worked hard, who's scrimped and saved, loves muscle cars, could one day go to a Dodge dealership and buy. He could go into a dealership and buy a vehicle with almost 800 horsepower that does zero to 60 in three and a half seconds, that runs the quarter mile in 10, six, that, that's nuts. That's the American dream. And it's not subtle about it at all. Now, you could confuse it for a much less powerful charger if you didn't know what you're looking for. But if you know what you're looking for, you're going to be wowed. It's not the only four-door sedan that makes a lot of power. It's super fast. You can go get one of the Germans, BMW M5 Competition, Mercedes MG E63 S, Porsche Panamera Turbo S, Audi R7, any of those. Or if you didn't need the rear doors and you didn't want a Dodge badge, you could go get a different muscle car with 760 horsepower. I'm talking about the Ford Mustang GT500. But we're focused on the Charger Hellcat Red Eye today. And we're going to see if this is just a bragging rights car or if it's something you might actually want to own. That's today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is. The 2021 Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Wide Body Baby. A word for every 100 horsepower on tap in this muscle sedan. The world's fastest mass production sedan. Crazy. This one is finished in tour red paint, absolutely free. Love it. Works so well with the just in your face nature of this sedan. One thing I think it really needs is the optional matte black hood. That would just set this thing off perfectly, especially with the black details like the flat black wheels. It just, it goes so much better. I've seen it in photos. I've seen the standard Hellcat with the matte black hood. It just looks that much better. We need that here. Need it. Now before we get too deep into this review, let's quickly chat about the channel. If you have not subscribed yet, I would encourage you to do so because you'll get access to daily car videos. We got POV day drives, POV night drives, live Q and A's and reviews like this one. You don't want to miss out on any of that. So just hit subscribe and tap the bell to get notified and you won't miss out. And if you like what we're putting out here, you want to support us, you can do so simply by liking, commenting, and sharing this video, or go above and beyond. Become a patron on our Patreon account, or a member on our YouTube channel memberships, get some perks, and just keep the car content flowing. It's really a great way for us to know that you like what we're doing, you want to see more of it. We appreciate it. And with that, let's get back into the Charger Hellcat Red Eye. So for 21, most of the changes we're seeing to the exterior, well, one, they're all for performance sake, and two, they're all really done for the Red Eye. They trickle down to the other Hellcat models, but they were done pretty much exclusively so that the Charger Hellcat Red Eye could make its full 797 horsepower. So we got things like this mail slot grill, a revised front splitter, and air inlets down here, and heat extractors on this new power hood, pulling the hot air out of that engine bay. And of course, he's still the front scoop. Big old thing. And it's just, there's so much menace up here, especially when you just swing a little bit over here and you see the width of these fender flares three and a half inches added to the track width of the Hellcat with the wide body and you cannot get the red eye without the wide body and that just is right. That's just right. It needs to be the most macho, 
the most door crushing, I don't know what visual I was thinking of, just like a car kicking down a door. That's what I was thinking of. That's, that's what this car is. And that's what you get from the front end. The rest of it is kind of been around for a while. So we got these LED daytime running lights and we've got HID headlights, Dodge there. And oh boy, you can see that this is a mainstream vehicle. You see that reflective plastic there? That's super cheap plastic. Reminding you that this is like a $30,000 sedan with an extra 50-ish K of performance. That's what that is. Coming to the side now, we see the deep dish pizza wheels, 11 inches deep, 20 inches in diameter. These flat black wheels are gorgeous. And we've got the optional black painted brake calipers. It's the SRT and Brembo right there. You pay extra for the for the uh, black on the brake calipers. You don't pay any extra for the Brembo brakes. 15.3 inch front rotors, 13.8 inch in the rear. Incredible stopping power. Good looking wheels with the SRT right there in the center, SRT on the brakes. You know what's kind of criminal though? No, it's not kind of, it is criminal. How is this vehicle almost 800 horsepower, rear wheel drive equipped from the factory with all season tires? How? How is that a thing? You have to pay extra for summer performance rubber. Yes, they're super wide, 305 section tires. And that friction patch is important, but you need really good rubber on there. All season tires are not that. And they ship this one to Southern California. I mean, come on. Now, here's your giveaway. Here's why you're paying the extra money over the standard Hellcat wide body. It is the red eye. And this is one downside to getting a tall red exterior. It's hard to see the jewel ruby red eyes within the Hellcat badge, but I mean, that's it. That right there, that's why you're paying the extra money. Not just for the jewel eyes, obviously, for the performance that comes with it, but that's your giveaway. Body color matching door mirrors. And when you step back, this is really where you can see the age of this sedan. Obviously the underpinnings being old, they are Mercedes Benz. Um, underpinnings, but 13, no, 15 years old now. But the, the profile, the design is where you can kind of see the age of the sedan, but we've still got some cool stuff. We got this cut out here, the backward C that comes up and runs along the shoulder line towards that spoiler in the back. Coming towards the rear angle, the shadows here are really good because you can actually see how deep the cutouts are for this functional bit of airflow back here, yes, again, pulling real air out from away, the, away from those wheels and brakes. And it's just so deeply cut in there. It's cool. Cool that you can see that with the shadows. Here's that rear three quarter width. That's thick. THI CC right there. <clears throat> Losing my voice. Coming to the back, we can see the LED tail light this beam bar running across the whole back. Dodge in flat black there. Charger, flat black there. SRT in a more reflective chrome. And then the black Hellcat. We also have, for 21, an updated deck lid spoiler. Now makes 40% more downforce. And then a revised diffuser. New design. Still have the same giant chrome dual exhaust ports. The back end is good. The, the, the whole exterior of this car is good. Aged, but beautiful. And you know what? So the thing about the Hellcat Charger is that most new sedans, performance sedans or otherwise, are like sculpted. They are, they're, they're artfully designed. This sedan is chiseled. It's just like they took a hunk of marble and just started hammering away at it. And this is what they came up with. And I love it. It's so in your face. Let's go see what that interior looks like. On our way in, we can see we've got smart key access. You can leave the key in your pocket. Just pull on the door handle to unlock it, to lock it. You've got this older system. You have to press down on that tab. That's for the front two doors, nothing for the rear doors. Opening up. We can see we've got here the black and sepia duotone. So Napa leather seats in this caramel colored interior. Excuse me. 
Excuse me, I'm doing a video here. And I like that color. I don't necessarily love it with the red exterior. I think that on gray or black would look awesome. But maybe a lighter tan would be a nice offering with this bright red exterior. Just my thoughts. What do you think? Do you think this sepia with the red is a good combo or would you prefer it with something else? So these are Napa leather seats. Very soft, good quality leather well bolstered comfortable you get some nice contrast stitching here in off-white you've got the srt hellcat imprinted into the seat back thick headrests here and these are heated and ventilated seats as standard in the hellcat red eye with two position memory over here power adjustable of course and then we've got that same black and sepia on the floor mats. This is not leather stripping. This is fabric just like that. Or this is carpeted. This is fabric. And you've got SRT printed there. That's the only like special little SRT touch that we're going to see around the door area. It's just on that floor mat. We don't have any like kick plate with SRT or Hellcat or anything like that. This is just hard plastic. It's okay. You're gonna see that there are certain things that modern performance sedans have that the Charger just hasn't added over the years as we go through this cabin. Keep in mind, mainstream sedan starts at like $30,000 for the regular Charger. They've just leveled it up for the Hellcat, but not everything has been leveled up. Some things, not everything. This one right here has a couple options on it. It's got the carbon and suede package. Hang on, I gotta clear my throat. <clears throat> just let me clear my throat. Carbon and suede. So this nice satin finish for the genuine carbon fiber around the instrument panel, here around the infotainment, and then on the center stack. Looks and feels fantastic. And then the suede for the headliner also feels pretty good. And that's not a crazy expensive package. It's like 1500 bucks. Then we have the Harman Kardon 19 speaker sound system. Harman Kardon isn't my favorite speaker manufacturer. Good quality audio, and it is an upgrade over the standard sound system in this vehicle. And it's also not so expensive of an option that it might be worth it, especially for audiophiles. But don't come in like with really high expectations for acoustic quality. The other option that we have, well, two more. One, we'll get to it in a sec, but we've got the navigation and travel group. So on our Uconnect, 8.4 inch infotainment we get navigation and five years of Sirius XM radio and then a power sunroof a power sunroof for like 15 or 1600 bucks that's not a standard feature on an $80,000 sedan I get it again you're paying really for the engine but that as an option seems a bit ridiculous it's not like a panoramic sunroof or anything like that you're just paying for a regular sunroof that without would make this cabin kind of darker that should be a standard thing as should summer performance tires be standard oddities material quality going beyond the packages material quality is pretty good in all the places you're going to lay your hands naturally you start looking around for cheap stuff you will find it but you just kind of lay your hands like if you're resting your elbow up here this is injection molded with genuine contrast stitch it's not like fake stitching here as i've seen on some injection molded pieces then down here, this is real leather, and it looks good with that contrast stitch, and it's it's got some give to it, as does this nice, thickly padded armrest spot with that white contrast stitching in there. You are going to be touching these pretty often, and these feel kind of cheap. And they're on, like, all FCA products, and only the front two windows are one-touch windows. The car is not on, so I can't do this. I'll do it in a sec. But only the front two, two windows are auto one touch down and up. The back two, you're holding those switches. You also don't have power folding door mirrors. Come on. Let's just, let's add that in. Some features, come on Dodge, we just gotta add those things in when we're demanding this much money for it. I get it, basic suite of charger features. Let's just add a few more things when we're spending this amount of money. Down here, this is all gonna be hard plastic. So the transition from the armrest down, that's, it's a hard one. Hard plastics, 
and you got this chrome trim piece here for some styling and they do continue they don't just go hard plastic in one color they at least do the sepia and the black they keep that theme so that looks better but it is very hard plastic up here the door handle feels fine and then let's hop inside take a look at other things and now I want to close the door but it is swung so far that you really have to stretch your body to close it. it does close nice and solid and then let's turn on the vehicle so hitting the red start stop button here seeing the red eyes of the Hellcat come up that's cool then the 8.4 inch Uconnect infotainment is up now we can look at the steering wheel and you know further emphasizing this is not a luxury vehicle this is hard plastic here this chrome treatment around just like on the door is not the highest quality it's probably going to scratch but that's all right SRT is illuminated in red at night that's fun the rest of the steering wheel good shape to it flat bottom here and perforated leather at nine and three nice thickness to the wheel as well good spot for your hands and that white contrast stitch on the inside looks nice down here this looks like metal or aluminum or but it's not that's cheap plastic over here we just have your basic cruise control functions no adaptive cruise control no lane keeping assist no additional driver aids this is just very basic here these paddles on the steering wheel are a little cheaper and they're only half paddles so this is all your paddle the rest of this is for adjusting infotainment settings and then the left one is for adjusting tft display settings this is just well, just attribute the whole thing to a paddle or make the paddles go around these controls like on the durango or t-rex rather that would be nice to see but instead you just have these half paddles they do have a reasonable amount of play to them so it does feel like you're really engaged in the paddle you're not you're not questioning whether you did that or not turn signals you just have one stock for your windshield wipers and your turn signals light is over there light is over there and then you do have of course a three blink just a three blink over here your light settings and then your trunk release button press that and show you what the trunk looks like in a sec this just yeah, satin carbon fiber is good and then up here injection molded that if you weren't touching it looks like leather and that's nice along with a real contrast stitching and that goes all the way around kind of this driver focused arrangement here and then over there in front of the passenger we've got a red head hellcat hellcat red eye with that red eye on your badge over there I like this we got some texture 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 is fun this one also has the customer preferred package so you have the red eye badges outside and in and you have a 220 mile per hour speedometer why did that sound so weird speedometer in red backing so this is a digital tft display analog gauges for your tack and speedo but 220 miles an hour that's cool and the uh the needles glow red at night as well looking at your tft display doesn't matter what you change up in here you're still going to see your compass upper left outside air temperature upper right fuel gauge off to the right oil temp off to the left and now going through these settings here we can see what we change up vehicle diagnostic speed warning screen setup messages radio your telemetry and then we're getting into our fuel economy not great <laughs> uh, so while we're looking at this, I can tell you that the fuel economy for the Charger Hellcat Red Eye wide body is going to be 12 city, 21 highway, not bad, and 15 combined. You won't see 15 combined. That's just in my experience. You will not see it. You'll be seeing less. Now we're getting into some performance data. We got a 0 to 60 timer, 0 to 100, eighth mile, quarter mile, braking distance, G force, peak G force, lap timer, lap history, top speed. You can read. So I'm not going to repeat all these things. But look at all these gauges that you get. All your important gauges that you'd monitor, want to monitor for your performance driving are repeated here and on the infotainment wing into performance pages. Then your speed. 
that's all the stuff in your TFT display. No head-up display, not, not even prime head-up display, as an option for this vehicle. I didn't show you this. Aluminum pedal covers. And the, oh, look at this, the truck-style push e-brake. That's still a thing. Still a thing, folks. Now moving on to the 8.4 inch Uconnect infotainment running the Uconnect 5 software. So really quick stuff now and so user friendly. It's almost looking small now though. It When it first came out, eight inch was like crazy, but now systems are 12 inches, 14 inches, crazy and, and mostly horizontal unless you're in Tesla or, or uh, you know Ford's new Mach-E with the tablet style display. But this is almost looking small now, but it is, now faster than ever. So you've got this U app setting and they call everything an app. So your driver heating and ventilation is an app. Uh, passenger heating and ventilation is an app. SRT dashboard, which you can get to from the physical buttons down here. A lot of things are redundant and redundant's good because whatever just naturally is your way that you control the infotainment, you can either press a button or touch the touch screen. Sirius XM Radio, as I said, with that nav and travel group, you get five years of Sirius XM Radio. Climate controls, just slide up or individually control or go down here and press a button. And then crank up, you can go into this control setting and if you want to just go into your heated steering wheel, that's one thing I forgot to mention, it does have a heated steering wheel. You can turn those on or off here, dim your mirror from there, apps, navigation, See, the thing is pretty quick, responsive. The graphics aren't the best, especially for the navigation. It's so last generation, and then your different settings in here. And I like this detail, you got the, the two hash marks of the Dodge logo that moves up and down as you go through the menu. So that's your 8.4 inch Uconnect infotainment. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, not wireless, are in the Charger Hellcat Red Eye. Moving down, we've got some uh, some texture for the rubberized borders of this. Make it very easy to grab and manipulate these things while not having to look at them. This is the benefit of physical, physical controls. And we've got a tuner and a volume knob. Jam out for a sec. Hazards are up there. You press the SRT button and you're gonna bring up the SRT dashboard. And here you can do a bunch of things at once. You can set the RPM that you want for your launch control, and you can activate that. You can activate the line lock system, which is gonna hold the front brakes and let you spin those rear tires if you wanna just do a burnout or if you wanna warm up the tires for your next drag race. We have the power chiller. That's another thing that is part of the customer preferred package. And the power chiller is pretty sweet. So I turned it on just now. I wanna to go to race options and because we've got better visual here. So this is going to reroute the refrigerant from your AC system to the engine, and to the intercooler rather, and cool down that engine by 45 degrees, a peak of 45 degrees. So instead of, you know, going out there after your drag race and throwing ice on the supercharger, this is just going to use the AC system to do that for you. You've got shift lights here, your launch control, a bigger readout of your tachometer here to set your RPM. You got a race cooldown on top of your power chiller. That's in your race options. Now let's show performance pages. Tap this. It is going to take a second to load. Doesn't matter if the car's been running for a while. Performance pages always takes a minute or two to load. Come on. Come on. Come on. Every time. This happens every single time. Okay. So we're up and we've got a few different visuals here. We've got our engine with this cool graphic showing your horsepower and torque and this changes actively as you blip the throttle as does the dyno. Saw that last blip there. There's another one. Ooh, yeah. Then we've got our G-force meter. Gauges. So this is page three, page two. Again, all the things you were seeing on the TFT are here. And page one. Then your timers. Again, much the, much the same things that you were seeing in there, you're just seeing laid out in a new place here. 
and your home page and you can customize this so whatever uh, widget you want to show up on this home screen you can just put it in there that is your performance pages and then if you go to drive modes you're gonna see we've got an auto and eco mode toggle on and off eco mode here in auto you can see we're using the red key so we got all 797 horsepower at our disposal custom mode and you can just do custom setup and then you can toggle on and off things. Do you want just 500 horsepower at your disposal? Uh, track mode for your transmission or sport or street for your paddle shifters. Do you want them on and off? Tra traction, those three settings. Suspension, steering, all those three settings. So you can calibrate your custom mode. Sport, you can calibrate sport and track the same way. You just go in and say, this is how I want sport to look. It's almost funny. It's like all the modes are custom. And then your track driving mode. Just everything, the most aggressive. But also keep in mind that the traction control is actually going to be more invasive in track mode than in sport mode. Sport mode's gonna let you play a little more. And then you've got a valet mode where it will just like give you just 500 horsepower and shut down all of the extra fun stuff. It won't even let you do launch control. So that's in your SRT dashboard there. And then you, if you just wanna launch, you can just hit that button right there. You don't have to hunt around in the menus first. Traction control button's there. You can turn off the screen easily just with this button and tap anywhere to turn it back on. Uh, your redundant climate controls, you've got a DC socket here. More of that carbon fiber in there. And this is injection molded. This isn't super cheap plastic, which I appreciate. And this is this is a textured plastic backing. So these things in here, better quality. The gear selector, this is plastic, but this is leather where you're gonna be resting your arm. And you do have a spot where you can rest your elbow and the top of your hand at the same time and grab it easily. Park, reverse. Here's another thing that is just outdated at this point. Your backup camera, yeah, you got grid lines, but this is your only view. There's no 360 degree surround view camera system or wheel camera angles or anything like that. You just have one backup view and it's not the highest resolution. It does take up the whole screen, which I'm grateful for, but it's not ultra high resolution. Drive and then click it over to a manual mode. I like that there's a dedicated manual mode. Yes, of course, you can just grab a paddle and you can engage manual mode, but if you stop using the paddles for a time, it'll go back to auto unless it's in the manual mode. Then it's only gonna be in manual mode. So just gotta use those paddles, buddy. Move that over, back to park. Here's your key. This is cool. The red eyes on your Hellcat red eye key, and this has got some depth and texture to it. Um, it's plastic backing, but it feels higher quality. Then you've got unlock, lock, trunk release, press that twice, and remote start, and your panic button. Let's just, let's do, while we're in park, let's just do a little remote start, shall we? You can also turn off the car easily just with a remote start. Uh, that's if you had started it that way, my mistake. We're learning things. So you actually, if you're gonna do remote start and to turn off the car, you have to turn it on and off with the key. So now the car is off, you hit lock first, and then you hit this twice, and it's going to remote start. And guys, let me tell you, if you have this car, this is something you'll do a lot, at least if you're me, because it's just so satisfying to hear this car start up. It's so fun that you'll end up just across the parking lot being like, I'm just gonna start up my car even though I can go start it up and it'll take the exact same amount of time. I'm just gonna do it from here. And here's how you can turn it off. See, I wasn't wrong. I was just wrongly applying that. So that's your remote start, which again, if you're a kid like me, you'll use it a lot. car doesn't need to be on right now because we're just going to go through the rest of the interior and it's nice and quiet now. So we've got this chrome border here for the cup holders and they look to be uh, not the best size. Here is where you are going to get some lighting in the cabin. It's not going to be any special customizable colors. It's just, I think it's red or it may just be, it may just be a white glow that you get in there. We'll show some footage of it so we'll know for sure. You can cover those up with this rubberized piece right here and your armrest is in leather with a contrast stitch. That's nice, good place to rest your arm. Open it up. See, so you've got a shallow space for your keys and if you even got coin slots, that's still a thing. And you can take that out. And then you've got two USB ports, pardon me, an aux inlet. And then you've got another DC socket. 
We got this DC and that DC. This one, we know we're going to use that one for our radar detector. We know that. And yes, we're working with USBs, not USB-Cs, because again, we're still using slightly outdated tech and interior conveniences. No wireless smartphone charger, for example. Over on this side, I already showed you up here, this is all injection molding. This goes down to cheap plastic. This is a cheap plastic lever. And here we got two levels to stash things. And the bottom one is a pretty good size glove box. Your manual fits up there so it doesn't take up the space of the bottom portion. Speaking of cheap plastic feeling things, this right up here is one of the cheapest things I've felt. It, it doesn't get much cheaper than the plastics used for that handle and for your sunglass holder, which you can see I'm using. But it, you, you at least have some foam padding back here so you're not gonna scratch up your things. But every time you touch this, you're like, ew, this is cheap. Uh, we also have incandescent lights, no LED lights for your interior lighting. That's not great. Uh, you do have home buttons here for your garage door programming, and then you can vent. Oh, I need to turn on the car now. I was wrong. I need to turn on the car. You can ventilate or fully open up your power moonroof. It's not a super small moonroof. That's good. Still not panoramic, but it's, it's not super small. You got that netted portion to cut down on the wind buffeting. Then close it up. And you've got this manual cover, blacks it out fully. Looking at the rear view mirror, no digital rear view mirror, no super advanced anything, not even frameless. Uh, you get this plastic piece surrounding the back, but it works. And then we've got our suede covered sun visor here, more plastic, opens up incandescent lights there, and then pull it out, swing it over, and yes, it slides. So important. Put that back, and then we've got your grab handle here, all in plastic, of course. And now, let's go show off the rear seat setup. Ah, while we're out here, I didn't show this. Capless fueling. Yes! Capless fueling is... That's it, guys. Just save all of the extra time, because you're going to be visiting this a lot. It's probably why they put some money into capitalist fueling. Uh, you're gonna be visiting the fuel station a lot, so the extra time you would have to unscrew your cap, saved now. These back windows, as I said, are not one touch. You gotta hold it all the way down, gotta hold it all the way up. They do go all the way down though, that's good. And then like the front, we've got the same injection molding with that contrast stitch into leather, more leather. So at least their, their continuity is there. So same material quality up at the front you get here in the back. And same cheap plastic surrounds and same cheap plastic switches. But the seats in the back, just like the front, you've got these nice details with stitched and perforation there. Very soft feeling leather and just so much cushion. So much cushion. That's good. The backs of the seats, are cheap plastic for the surrounds, but then this turns into leather. So at least they sprung for a little bit of leather in here for your slot. Then moving down here, get in and look. Okay, so we got two stage heated seats for the back, and that is a standard feature for the Hellcat Red Eye. And then two USB ports, so these passengers aren't gonna be fighting over it unless you got a third passenger in the middle. Air vents, so important. Uh, but this is all cheap plastic backing around that. No center armrest to come down, but you do have these pull handles to fold these down to improve your trunk space. But let's hop in first and see how our leg and headroom looks. So we've got nice big foot wells there, so it's easy to slide my legs forward. And I've got plenty of knee room here. What's my headroom situation? Well, my head is, it's brushing against the roof. Brushing against the roof. So I could slide my feet a little further forward and move my butt forward, decrease the knee angle, and then, then I've got like a half inch, a half inch of headroom. So it's acceptable. If I want to go in the middle seat though, first of all, you get a huge transmission hump. So your legs are going to be straddling that in the middle seat. You'll have to share with your passenger friends over here. But then my knee room situation, fine. Headroom. 
no, that's not gonna work for me. So full size adults, again, this is my driving position at six feet tall, so you can see full size adults can fit behind each of the front seats. Middle seat, this is gonna have to be a small poison. Small poison. And we're out. So let's go see the trunk. I was gonna show you when I push the trunk release button here. It flies up all the way, all the way up. I'm all the way up. And then here's your trunk. You've got uh, insert cubic feet of space here, JD. I think off the top of my head it's 14, but I, I'm probably wrong. And then nothing special going on in the trunk here. You do have some hooks for you to put grocery bags or something like that. Again, incandescent lights, not LEDs, all carpeted throughout. And you can lift this up and you don't get a full size spare tire because how would they fit an 11 inch wide wheel in here? It would have to be a little donut and that would just look hilarious on this vehicle. So they just didn't even bother. You got a cubby area where you can store some things and then you've got a uh, air, pump my goodness the words just left me and then your battery is back here so that's the trunk no way to fold down those seats from back here which means you got to go over pull this lever here and then fold it forward and it doesn't fold all the way flat and I blame honestly all the cushioning it doesn't go all the way flat because there's so much cushioning for those back seats they're really comfortable genuinely guys very comfortable back seats pull the same lever on this side, fold it forward. So you can see that, oh, what, 20, 25 degree angle, 30 degree angle to the seat backs, but you've expanded your depth into the cargo bay quite a bit. Love that. So that's the practicality of the charger. And honestly, the practicality is the reason I would gravitate personally towards this over the Challenger, just because you can carry two more friends than you can in the Challenger comfortably. You can physically fit in more people into the Challenger in the back seats, but you just don't want to. Oh, and I didn't show, there is a grab handle, not a power open or close, but there's a grab handle. And to release it from back here, you press this button right there. So it's kind of incognito back there. light easy to close so that's the interior of the dodge charger srt hellcat red eye last two things to do we know what they are we probably already saw a hint of one a second ago yeah it's time for the big bottle test in the charger hellcat red eye so let's see slide this back look at these cup holders will it fit no not even close. Center console, I'm not optimistic about this because this is not very deep. Oh, wow. That was surprising. It actually fits in there. That's cool. Okay, so you can fit your big bottle in the center console. Door pockets. Wow, well, the door didn't swing all the way open. Amazing. But I gotta do this. Mm. Oh, kind of. Will it stay though? Oh, it stays. That's crazy, it doesn't look like it should stay, but it stays. Dang. Okay, so the Charger Hellcat Red Eye passes the big bottle test. I think the Challenger Red Eye didn't pass this test, so that's amazing. That's cool, okay, so that's done, and that just means it's actually one of my favorite parts now. Rev it up. Oh yeah, and take it for a drive. All right, it's time for some fun. So let's do launch control. We're gonna start out in sport drive mode and then I'm gonna go into this SRT dashboard and set the RPM for launch. We're just gonna leave it at 2000 because it's kind of a colder day. Some moisture on the ground, then hit the activate launch control button, hold the brake, give it full throttle, let go. Yeah, already got wheel spin. This is with the launch control system. Still wheel spinning, okay, and now we hooked up. That's insane, <laughs> that's insane. Okay, uh, all right. Now if I did that right, which I didn't, and the tires weren't prepped and everything wasn't right, if you had done that right, zero to 60 would have taken three and a half seconds. 
but it definitely didn't because we were spinning out for like the first three gears. <laughs> oh, the noise. The noise is so good. You get that supercharger whine. It's magical. Now let's let this new electronic steering rack and adaptive Bilstein suspension do its thing in these corners. Let those Brembo brakes haul us down, power out. Wow. And the Pirelli P0s, 305 section, all four corners. This is a wonderful performance recipe. Oh, this is good. All right, gonna flip it around and we're gonna do it again. We'll change some things up. This time, we're gonna try manual mode. So to do that, we will engage manual here on the gear selector. And let's see about this turning radius. I already had helped it a little bit. Ah, it's not good. It's not good. While we're also doing this, let's go into track drive mode. Now track mode, unlike some other vehicles, doesn't mean you've got more play in the electronic stability control system. It means you've got less, like they're really trying to rein you in. But let's go for it. Short shift so we can keep the power down. Oh, wow. Oh, that supercharger sounds so good. I swear it's louder than the 2.4. <laughs> oh, insanity. Okay. All right, so let's let's talk about some things now instead of just mashing on the throttle and ripping around corners. So, the changes that they make for the red eye. Uh, more airflow because of all the exterior changes. We've got strengthened engine internals. We've got a bigger blower, so upgraded from the 2.4 liter supercharger in the standard Hellcat to a 2.7 liter supercharger. So now we make 14.5 PSI of boost up from 11.6 and we've got a two-stage fuel pump as well so I got to get that gasoline into the combustion chambers and it's it's amazing and I'll tell you what instantly I feel like the red-eye version of the charger feels faster than the standard Hellcat and that's impressive because the Challenger red-eye that I drove didn't really feel all that much faster. I don't know what's at play there and why it didn't feel that much faster. This feels faster. I believe the performance numbers. And it it will just spin the tires in fourth gear if you're not ready for it. If you're not laying gently into that throttle, it's going to spin the rear tires. You have to be paying attention. All right, let's go back to sport drive mode. We don't need to be in track here. Also, in track, the suspension does get pretty firm. It's, it's really meant for a racetrack. It's not meant for a canyon road. You really should just leave it in sport mode and pay attention in sport because that one does allow more play from the electronic stability control system. I can't get enough of that noise. And it's so layered. There's so much dimension to it because if you eke into the throttle just slightly, you just get lots of supercharger wine and then you mat it and the Hemi takes over. It's wonderful. This is a thrill. This is a serious freaking thrill. Okay, so let's talk about the handling. So stable through that section back there. It was so confidence inspiring. You feel the wide contact patch. You feel the adaptive Bilstein just settling up, settling the car down, keeping it planted through corners. And this, uh, this electronic steering rack does a really good job. It's a little dead on center, but it builds so nicely as you work your way in the corner and you're turning the wheel a little more, builds up resistance and you get that feel, you get that confidence as you're taking a corner. And then these Brembo brakes are sensational. They're so powerful, hauls this 4,600 pound vehicle down, no problem at all. It's impressive. It really is impressive. The performance here is no joke. And then this transmission is so good. It's so good. The development that they've done over the years, it works its way smoothly through the gears if you leave it to its own devices. If you go into manual mode, it'll very quickly downshift right where you want it to. 
and then immediately upshift, fractions of a second right there. So the gearbox, no complaints, the handling, no complaints, the power, definitely no complaints, and not the noise. The noise is on another level. Seriously, it's amazing. But okay, let's settle down here. Let's go into auto drive mode and just let the car cool down a little bit. You could even go into eco if you wanted to and try to save some fuel because you're gonna need to. This car gets what, 12 city? 21 highway, 15 combined. But okay, let's talk about just settling down in the Charger Hellcat Red Eye. Can you kind of just see yourself daily driving this? Absolutely, absolutely. One, these armchairs that I'm sitting in are so comfortable. They held me in place beautifully in the corners and now they're just like cushioning my body from all sorts of road blemishes. Again, credit the adaptive suspension for that too, but it just, it's just so comfortable to cruise in. And also it's easy to drive this vehicle at modest paces. It's not like you're terrified that, well, one, if you go into auto and eco mode, it's gonna kill the throttle response just a little bit. And you may wanna do that for yourself so you're not constantly like, you know, pounding it. Um, but it's very easy to drive at a modest pace. It cruises comfortably. It's relatively quiet in this cabin. The only thing it's really missing for like a long road trip would have been those active driver assist features. That would have been really nice. Okay, let's talk about the competition real quick. So if you wanted to spend, okay, starting price for the Charger Hellcat Red A, if you include the gas guzzler, is about $80,000. This one has tested $90,000 with some options. Compare that to, if you want a super fast sedan that doesn't have a Dodge badge on it, you've got the BMW M5 competition. I'm not gonna go through all these, I'll just give two examples. The M5 competition is one example, and that's $113,000 to start and it makes 617 horsepower because it has a part-time all-wheel drive system that you can switch to rear-wheel drive. It's zero to 60 time is going to be faster. It's gonna be 3.1 seconds. It's top speed, however, is going to be slower, 189 miles an hour. Mercedes-AMG E63S, also gonna be more expensive, $103,000 to start, so not as expensive as the M5 competition. It's gonna make 603 horsepower, so almost uh, 200 less than this. Zero to 60 is gonna be faster, three seconds flat. Top speed is gonna be lower, 186 miles an hour. And fuel economy, both for the BMW and Mercedes-AMG E63 is gonna be better than this, of course. It's uh, 17 for the BMW, 18 for the E63. Then if we wanna talk muscle cars, that don't have a Dodge badge, we've got the Mustang GT500, and that is gonna make 760 horsepower. It's gonna start at $74,000. Zero to 60 for that one is gonna be same with this, 3.5 seconds, because it's rear wheel drive and it's fighting the same battles that this car is. And the top speed for that one is gonna be 199, so just four mile per hour slower than the Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye. And that's your spread. So. We just have to appreciate that no other American car does anywhere close to the figures that this Charger Hellcat Red Eye is putting out. If you want a German car, you can get faster figures, but it's not the same. It's not the same brashness. I hope that when the Cadillac CT5, the Blackwing comes out, we'll get another option and that one with a manual gearbox. But until that happens, this is the only way to get this kind of performance, this kind of brash look, and this, kind of thrill it's this car and i'm just i'm so happy dodge makes this i don't care that it's old i don't care that the technology isn't perfect or that it doesn't have active driver assistance, assistance features um i don't care that it guzzles all the gas that it does if you do then look elsewhere but if you don't then this is your american dream folks this is it thank you guys so much for watching and i will maybe see you again next time <laughs>